Uh, last week, um, I got into an in-depth discussion um, with you about um, the continued questions about why governors like Andrew Cuomo and others sent people with COVID back to the nursing homes. Um, I did some statistical calculations on how many of those people that died in New York um, and what their value of their statistical life was or the cost of their statistical life was um, to the state of New York. And New York and others have some major, major pension liabilities. And um, I had posited to you that, um, you know, Andrew Cuomo could have potentially plugged a hole uh, between New York State's uh, contribution to Medicaid and um, the liability the government had to a number of those folks who died in the nursing homes uh, may have plugged a hole of uh, somewhere between uh, five and six billion dollars by allowing some folks to get transported back to a nursing home. It doesn't make sense when they're the most endangered people why you would send them to a facility that's full of other endangered people. Um, Lots going on in the markets. Uh, big run up yesterday. I can't explain it, as I've been telling you for the last couple of months now. Um, since March, I personally have a bias to uh, find overvalued situations. And I have been uh, not suggesting you do this, but I'm just telling you what I do, and that's what I like to do here. Um, I have been shorting a number of stocks which I think are completely overvalued and their forward prospects are grim, uh, including um, you know, a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna get into them a little later in the show, but Simon Property Group, big mall owner, uh, AMC Theaters, one of the biggest theater chains in the, in the country, and uh, Brookfield Asset Management, high-rise commercial stuff, and uh, malls here in uh, the US and Canada. Uh, I think uh, Gap Stores was on the brink of bankruptcy before uh, this whole COVID thing happened. So I don't know with the reduced capacity how they could possibly be improving, but um, we'll take a look deeper at that a little later on. And also Macy's. Um, Macy's, famous old name. You know, you like to think it's going to hang around forever on a nostalgia thing, but uh, to me, it looks like it's going the way of uh, JC Penney's and Toys R Us. And uh, you may hear some noise in the background there. Um, my house hasn't been cleaned in a couple of months, so um, my dear friend Rosa is here um, trying to get the place in shape so it's nice and spick and span. Um, looking over at the Bitcoin side of things, um, I'm having a lot of conversations with a lot of people on you know, what the real forward value is. I think um, the U.S. has made some great, great strides in um, outlining some rules for cryptocurrencies. They're now allowing security tokens where you can digitize and commoditize basically a business opportunity. And um, I would warn you that uh, in the craze of 2016 and 17, a lot of these little altcoins, as they call, came out. Um, stay away from all of them. If there was a way I could short them all, I'd be short them all, believe me. And um, to me, the only one with real value, the one getting any institutional traction around the world is Bitcoin. And um, as far as I'm concerned, if you're into growth and you're building a portfolio to retire on in 20 years, um, you should start educating yourself on cryptocurrency and you should take a real close look on if you have even a sliver of Bitcoin in your portfolio. Um, I think there are tremendous growth opportunities. Uh, we just passed a major milestone in uh, you know, Bitcoin's short life in that uh, we went through this halving event um, where people are paid, uh, com supercomputers are paid to run the network. It's a decentralized network and supercomputers are paid um, to verify transactions, basically solve these big, huge math problems, and they get a sliver of Bitcoin um, each time they put together a whole bunch of these into a block, and that's why they call it the blockchain, because they take thousands of transactions into one, slam them together, and then they all get verified, and uh, people get a bounty, a little piece, a satoshi, they call it, um, and they cut that fee in half. Now, that might sound like, oh, my God, they cut the fee on Bitcoin. It's going to zero. No, it's actually a quite cleverly poised uh, instrument where in cutting the bounty, they are actually slowing the rate of dilution 
to the other Bitcoins that are out there. So instead of X amount being created every day to continue verifying transactions, um, half of X is coming out every day. And that means that the supply of Bitcoin is no longer expanding as fast as it was just a month ago. So, you know, you might, for those of you who are traditional stock buyers, you might think almost like a buyback and when they start taking uh, stock out of the market. And that's usually a good sign because there's uh, less supply. And if you continue to have more demand, um, things start to be uh, looking up. and. Uh, you know, early last week I had told you that uh, Venmo, digital cash favorite Venmo, and um, Cash App are now considering considering getting into the cryptocurrency game even deeper. Um, I think on the Cash App you could actually uh, exchange cash USD for uh, cryptocurrency, and it looks like Venmo is going to be following suit. Uh, 